So we're at this project right now. We're going to get an inspection for a retaining wall. So we're going to wait here for the inspector. She'll be here 20 minutes. B, it's all branding. Branding. It's all about the branding, even when we're not here. So on this project, we had about 14 concrete trucks coming in for the shot creek. Three concrete trucks got delayed, so we were pouring concrete at nine o'clock at night. So the cops got called by the neighbors. And I spoke to the cops and I told them, hey man, I'm sorry, but I can't stop the concrete. Like, even if they're there till 10, like it's not, it's out of my hands. The concrete needs to get poured because the rebar. I could have ruined this whole pool if it wasn't finished. Luckily, I ended up with three tickets citations but we were able to finish the pool there's a city ordinance that you're not supposed to work, do work after 5 p.m or 6 p.m they were called out because it was six o'clock and we were still pouring concrete i had to I, could, I couldn't stop so i had to make the decision and say you know what keep going and i spoke to the officer he was cool but he said there's nothing i can do if they call me back i'm gonna give you another ticket and then on the third ticket he said if i come back it's gonna be a misdemeanor so I was like, dang, am I going to jail? Or what? Like, uh, just trying to build a pool. But luckily, uh, at the third ticket, we were able to finish all the concrete. And, you know, I, I lost, it was like $500 in fines, but it was $500 or a ruined $100,000 pool. Yeah, I mean, there was no brainer. So it was on this busy street. It's like the concrete truck was here. We were pouring the shotcrete. And dude, the neighbor, like three houses down, she started calling the cops. And I was in Orange County. So when they called me, I couldn't come out. So I was just on speakerphone with the cop and just telling him, hey, we need to get it done. I understand the rules and, and I've never had this happen to me, but I cannot stop pouring the concrete because it's already, you know, the rebar, the sh it was, it was going to mess up the whole structure of the pool. So I took my chances and we ended up finishing it. So, but yeah, this was a street and you always want to be the representative of your project. So it was me talking directly to the officers, trying to talk to the neighbor that called the cops too and said, hey, I'm sorry. It wasn't, you know, our intention to work past six o'clock. I think this project slows like to 400 or half a million. It's important that you guys do this. You know, it really looks good on your company when you're thinking about safety and protection. You can see we did a railing too, because if the inspector comes and sees that we don't have like safety precautions, it's a bad sign. So we want to make sure that he sees that we're professional and we take this seriously. You see why it's important? Like, you know, if you're working here and you slip and you puncture yourself, safety. No water bottles, no Coke cans, no beer cans, safety caps. You know when somebody walks into your house or you walk into somebody's house and it's a fucking mess and you're already like, uh, I want the inspectors or even my customers to come and see a clean job site. It just represents you in a good uh, light. You're responsible, you're clean. There's so many job sites I've been to that it's just like a junkyard, trash everywhere, wrappers, beer cans, it's just a mess. So cigarette butts, you wanna keep your job sites clean. These safety caps, I think they're like around a dollar and some contractors don't wanna spend that. And it's like, dude, do you know how much it would cost you for emergency room visit if one of your guys get punctured by one of these rebars? You know, you gotta spend the money, it's your business, you gotta invest and you protect yourself from any liability. So me buying these, it's saving me thousands of dollars of potential risk of somebody getting hurt. Like you can literally sit on this. I wouldn't, but you could literally sit on it. <laughs> and imagine sitting on that and they're reusable. Like imagine you, you imagine if you want to sit there or sit there, which one would you decide? Join the Patreon if you want to see a full video <laughs> demonstration. You should make a note on, for the guys that were here. Make a note and do a good job. Yeah, and put something for them so they know that we are rewarding. Pictures of them that are group chat. Yeah. Like, oh, guys. Yeah, imagine if this wasn't on here, like you can really hurt yourself here. Good job on the crew that's here for safety. But I need the 10 hours. I think that's what I'm going to do first. ¿Quieres que los pegue entonces? Sí, por favor. ¿Algo más? Oh, they put this really. ¿Qué onda, Jorge? So here we're doing a whole infinity pool, retaining wall, fire pit. Right now we're getting ready for the inspector uh, to get here. Inspect the rebar, inspect the key. Right now I'm just going to check the measurements with Guapo because you never know. Got to make sure. Uh, usually they, the guys do it. Guapo talks to the inspector. ¿Cuántas? 438. ¿De? De más varilla. Ah, ah. Sí, sí, sí. 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 S
Down there, we're gonna do all artificial grass. And then we did a rock border. And all these landscape ties are gonna be for going downstairs. We have avocado tree. All this will be re-landscaped as well. So the infinity pool here, we're gonna have the water go over here into this catch basin. It's all gonna be tiled. Infinity pools are a lot harder to build than a uh, regular pool. You have to do more pumps, more filters, just more work in general. It looks nicer. And then the caissons too. When they're on a hill, it's like uh, big holes full of rebar and cement that go all the way down 20, 30 feet. Exactly, like a foundation. So right here, we already did the plywood. So we're forming for the concrete steps. So when my concrete truck comes, we're gonna pour these steps all at once with the top. So, you know, part of construction is being efficient. And once you have the concrete truck here, you wanna make sure that you maximize the space for it and the time. So all these steps are gonna be poured. So I get everything ready for concrete. And once the concrete comes, we get everything done at the same time, trying to be efficient. So this hillside was unusable, so now we have it all spread out and the client's gonna maximize his uh, space here. California is expensive. You wanna make sure that you're using all your real estate. That's why landscaping and having a vision design and architect is important because we'll maximize the space. We have a landscape architect on this project, the very known architect. I developed Rosewood to be custom custom projects like this, you know, that take three to six months to complete. Just because there's a big demand here, they want to deal with one contractor. So we are the swimming pool contractor, the landscape contractor, and the concrete contractor. So we basically take care of everything that has to do with the outside of the project. That's something that we take care of. A lot of companies just focus on one trade and that's fine. But you know, in, in my market, it was more beneficial to me just to take on the whole projects outside managing it. and it's not convenient for a lot of people you know some people are better off just doing trees and sticking the trees and growing the tree division for me like i said my market demanded this so this is what you know i grew into but for some people just having one trade whether it's painting stick to painting and, and they're probably better off we were able to so we took care of our client we installed all the privacy hedge here so down here there's a trail where a lot of hikers come sometimes i like to come here every morning and run my five miles but uh here there's a trail so he wants the privacy so we installed all these ficus as you can see they're like 14 foot tall already planted nobody has time to wait a year or two to let them grow so here we're going to be doing artificial grass so you can see all the dgs already compacted it's ready for the kids to play it's like a play area see they got a nice little bench here we were able to salvage all this stone and create a retaining wall for the hillside so he's very happy with this project we're happy with it and that's what it is, you know, we're making sure we take care of our clients. So before, the way we used to do it, my guys used to go pick up materials at the building supply store. They would spend two hours, burn my gas, burn my insurance, all the liability. And then they would come all the way to the job site carrying this. And then they would all unload it by hand. I knew there was a better way. So now we get everything delivered. I paid 200, 250, whatever the delivery charge is, because if you think about it, if it took my guys three hours from start to finish to pick up this material, bring it here and unload it, for those three hours, I could have had them working at a job site, you know, making almost a thousand dollars to save $250. It doesn't make sense. So always get your materials delivered. Right here, we have the waterline tile. We have the block for the wall. Downstairs, we have other materials. I always want to have the materials ahead of time. I don't want to be waiting all that time waiting is downtime and you guys need to have everything here so they can get to work so he was asking me questions about you oh really he said you know this rosewood this danny and i said, oh i know danny great he's awesome nice he's, he does everything i ask him no no arguments no complaints i go he's mm. the best of the best i haven't seen you in a while where are you working uh hermosa beach mahan beach so we just had inspection right now and the inspector came checked all the rebar checked the new plans and we are good to go it's always great news when we pass inspection now we can get the concrete ordered and keep these projects moving so it's important to follow and get a structural engineer because at the end of the day us as contractors we want to build something that is going to last and build something right so even if, if for any reason that wall were to buckle you know we protect ourselves because we say we did it per soils engineer per structural so it covers us as a contractor from any liability because we're building it to the specifications so when we get these projects you know first it comes with the design and then from the design we get structural and soils engineer so it's a lot of things you know in motion to create these projects it's just not like a little drawing and you're done. There's a lot of different people involved to get these projects from start to finish. On the cities we work for, when they require the engineer, we send the plans to the engineer. They get the soils report 
And then from the soils report, the structural engineer creates his report and his uh, plan. And then we follow his plan and actually build it on site. That's exactly the, the order that we need to go. Then the inspector comes and gives me a sign up. He came already, everything good. He checked the rebar, the spacing, the sizes. And it's important that you have a clean job site because that tells everything. You can see everything's nice and clean. He even told me that, you know, congratulations on the clean job site that he usually sees you know, a lot of messy people and that we always keep the job sites clean.